Hello Aquarius, welcome to the channel, this is Asnoitsha here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level, what it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of you may have been in a relationship. This could have been in the past. It could also be a current relationship. For others of you, this could be someone who you've met. And you know there's a whole lot of energy but no one's speaking up. For a small portion of you, this could be a situationship. And you don't know where it's headed. Because there's a whole lot of confusion. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that I need. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have. <clears throat> and I have certain reasons for that. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to provide you with some advice based on what comes up today. We have here betrayal followed by crisis, abundance, play, doubt, nourishment, grief, sensuality, followed by relationship, under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Aquarius, I understand the things that I have done. They have been less than honorable. I have betrayed you. I have said and done things that you did not expect. I have become that person that is very much like a stranger. And you wonder why I did this. That's understandable. I have behaved in ways where you thought you knew me and it turns out you never really knew me at all. There's a lack of faith. There's a lack of trust. And once there was a lot of that. But now there's none. And because of this, because of what I put myself into, immersed myself into this betrayal, I now feel truly overwhelmed. So overwhelmed that everything goes in my mind, a mile a minute, circling, circulating, changing. It increases and it doesn't decrease, it doesn't stop. <clears throat> I'm overwhelmed because the feelings and emotions are so intense. I'm unable to make sense of any of it. There is a part of me that feels a lot of mental anguish, frustration, and impatience. I find it very difficult. I find it virtually impossible. And I see that in this connection, materialistic gain and money has been one of the center pillars. It is important to be settled. It is important for me to be that person who can provide, who can work with you as a partner and 
build a future together in a tangible way. I want to learn from you. I want to gain from you. Learn that wisdom. And learn those skills. In you, I have found a friend. There is mischief in your eyes. And you are very vibrant. You make me feel alive again. You make me want to live life again. Because you are so vibrant and youthful. But I doubt any of that will happen. Simply because everything that has happened in between, that sense of betrayal breaks everything down. Yes, there is a sense of friendship, but there's also doubt. And there is betrayal associated to this doubt. I now doubt that any of the beliefs, any of the efforts that have been put in, nothing will come to fruition. I don't believe it will. There's a lack of faith. There's a lack of trust now. So I don't think this connection can work out. Even though I feel and I realize now that you are the perfect mate. You are that one person who can make it all right. You fulfill all of my needs, every fantasy. Fulfilling me emotionally, spiritually, and physically. You are the perfect mate. The perfect partner. But I grieve. I am upset and I'm sad. Loneliness. Sadness. Melancholy. <clears throat> I feel guilty. I feel remorse. And I feel regret. Because now I feel and fear that I'm losing you forever. Yes, I have lost you. And this scares me. What I also fear is not being able to be that person who can take care of you, who can take care of myself, take care of us. I don't think I can be that person. I'm afraid of being that individual. Not only will it bring a lot of responsibilities, but I don't even think I can do it. Am I committed enough? In you, I have found somebody who is just so sensual. You are sensual. You don't even have to seduce, and you don't even have to try, but it just happens. I feel that your body is breathtakingly beautiful. Breathtakingly handsome. Everything about you is tantalizing. Your clothes tease me. And sometimes when I see something wrapped around your neck, I wish that was me. I want to be close to you. I envy all of those things. Because they are able to be so close to you and cling to your body. I want to touch your cheek, to caress your face, and to kiss you, and to just hold hands and walk. These are things that I have fantasized about and I have thought of. These are things that I miss and I wish I could recreate them. Overall, right now, many moons, many nights have gone by, and I just stay awake, lying awake in bed, staring at the ceiling, thinking about you, thinking about us, 
How can things be better? How can I move forward? How can we work together? Yes, I find it very challenging. But I like how you are with others and how others are with you, and I like what I see. I want to be part of that. If only I could be. For now, no, Aquarius, you do not see me or hear me reaching out to you because I am overwhelmed. Why? Simply because of the way I have treated you this entire time. It was not right. But I know what I did was wrong. And I can't turn back time. I can't change anything. So I have to live with it. I have to deal with it. And I know I can only do that if you and I finally see eye to eye and if we meet in the middle. All right, Aquarius. Interesting. It's not bad. I do see hope, but it's like a glimmer of hope. Your person of interest, first of all, first card's the strongest. The biggest thing of all in this connection, Aquarius, somebody has betrayed someone. Someone here feels as if they knew them, but one of the people in this connection, either you or this person, and this could be vice versa, somebody here has turned out to be quite different than what the other expected to be. And any plans that you may have had, it just did not turn out the way things were thought out. It's so unexpected that it creates grief and feelings of being just so overwhelmed that nothing makes sense. How did all this happen? Why did it happen? Why did things turn out this way? That's something that I'm seeing here. All right, we have here also the Lover's Path Tarot. So with this deck, I like to have a look at anything that happened in the past. So I go a little bit into the past to see what happened in the first place. So something happened in this connection where things were going great, they were going fine, then all of a sudden just plummeted, just went right downhill. What was that? Why did things turn out the way that they did? Your person of interest may not have told you this. They may not have confided in you. Maybe they were just feeling embarrassed or they didn't want to create a scene. A lot of people avoid. People in the alpha state, whether they are male or female, they do tend to avoid confrontation. They don't want to talk about something that will hurt the other person and make them cry simply because they don't want to seem as if they're the bad guy or girl. So, yes, I do see here somebody discontinued their connection. This could have been somebody who has ghosted you. They may have just faded over time. The messages may have become quite less. Or this person just simply didn't give you the closure that you needed. These cards I read a little bit into the past. The first set of cards you just saw, for those of you who are new, that is the current status. And I also read these in the reverse. So this is to give you a better understanding as to what happened. So you can perhaps use this information and maybe even move on or have a better understanding for your own knowledge. Here, I'm reading the reverse. So it's a lack of courage, a lack of strength, a lack of leadership, and a lack of confidence that came from this person. Why? Because your person of interest at some point in time was feeling insecure and fearful. There was a scattering of the energy that they had. They were not focusing on one thing. They were scattering this energy, meaning their focus was on many things. Creating discord to weaken others. They were not getting right to the point. They would talk about other things. They would beat around the bush, but not really talk about the matter at hand. So fearful, insecure. This is what your person was feeling. 
they never would have told you this, that this is what was happening. Now, let's have a look at maybe the reason why. Why were they feeling like this? Here we have the Two of Cups. In the reverse, it talks about the reason why they were feeling, with this card, fearful and insecure and kind of beating around the bush, not getting to the heart of the matter, was due to a lack of harmony, a lack of partnership, and a lack of love that existed in this connection that could have been an important relationship or a love relationship. But what ended up happening was there was a sense of infatuation. And this person started overindulging in sensuality for the sake of the emotional high. Sensuality. You did have the sensual card. So they were very physically hooked to you, okay? And that is a problem. They were physically attracted to you so much that it got to the point where it was very toxic. And that's what happened here. <clears throat> You're dealing with somebody here who got into the connection, having a lot of infatuation, and you may have thought it was love. Now, remember, this is a general public love reading. This is not a private reading. You know, it's not specific. This is very generic. So take it as it resonates. But what I do see here, on the average, is a sense of fear, insecurity, not really getting to the heart of the matter, but nibbling around the edges and only enjoying that sense of sensuality, but not diving and delving in deep into the emotions. That is what happened here. They were afraid of falling in love. So they kept their distance. And while they kept that distance, they were just focusing on the physical. They were overindulging. That's not even good, too. I mean, that's really not good. Because overindulging talks about basically abusing it, almost in a way. Not valuing it. Taking it for granted. All right. Let's have a look at the beginner's tarot. Here, I'd like to have a look at any actions, any plans, any intentions your person of interest may have towards you. Wow, two of swords. Wanting to be in denial, not wanting to talk about it at all. Followed by the knight of swords. <coughs> Then we have the Ten of Wands. Oops, not the Ten of Wands, but it could be Ten of Wands. Why did I say Ten of Wands? Ten of Wands talks a lot about burdens. And that's probably why, and this is the Ten of Cups, burdens. This is why with the Six of Swords, they want to move on from those burdens. All right, we have here one, two, three cards that are a bit challenging. Um, we also have two beautiful cards, the Ten of Cups and the Six of Cups, gorgeous cards. So here with the Two of Swords, whatever the situation is, this person is, they're not really, okay, they're, they're in denial, but they're not really in denial. They know that what they did was wrong, but they're pretending to be in denial because they're forcing themselves. They're trying to manipulate their own mind. They're trying to force themselves into believing that this was all someone else's fault. This is not their fault. They're completely in denial here. But the type of denial is not, it's a very strange sort of denial. It's not like they're really denying that they did it. You know how in that card, that one, the one we just had here, it did say, um, oh gosh, it talked about Beating around the bush, right? That's the phrase that I used. And not getting to the heart of the matter. And that's what it is. They're just kind of procrastinating here. So they're just taking some time out, right? This is a time out situation. Here we have this person doesn't want to see anything about this connection. They don't want to hear anything. They have crossed their heart with these swords. They don't want anything to do with it. And the problem with that is that they're completely in denial, right? And that's bad. That's not a healthy relationship. That can't be a healthy person either. If they're acting like this, this should not be the case. However, 
even though they're doing this, they want to rush back into your life and sweep you off your feet. Yes, the Knight of Swords. The problem with the Knight of Swords is also the fact that it's very rash, very impulsive behavior. And we need someone here that is not so impulsive, somebody that is pretty much grounded. But what are they running towards? What are they rushing towards? They're rushing towards you in a long-term committed relationship. That is the type of situation they want to find themselves in here with you. It is a beautiful card, 10 out of 10 card. Now, remember, I also said the 10 of wands. So in between these cards, there is this 10 of wands feeling where things are very overwhelming, where they are burdened by other things. However, because they're burdened, they know that there are certain things that they can do in this connection and certain limitations that they have. Therefore, they do not tell all, they do not give all, but the ultimate card is a Ten of Cups. Eventually, what I see here is that they're going to try to get rid of the feelings and emotions that are associated to the Ten of Wands, which is being very overwhelmed with so many things going on in this person's life. They're very overwhelmed. They want to get over that. Now, after they get over that, this is what they hope to achieve, which is the Ten of Cups. Beautiful card. This is somebody who wants a home with you. They want to be a couple. They want to have children or family. Could be pets, could be fur babies, uh, reptiles as pets, does not matter. Uh, plants as pets. People do keep plants as pets. I do. As weird as that sounds. But it's something. It talks about growth, prosperity, moving forward, hope and joy. That is what this person desires, truly. Now, they know that this is something that they want and they want to achieve. But how are they going to do that? <clears throat> With the Six of Swords, wanting to move on from the situation that they're in. One of the reasons why, first, they can't handle it anymore. Second, they want more understanding. They need more clarity, but they also want to move on to calmer waters. There's two things. Either they just completely deny this and, and just forget it, just bury the hatchet, so to speak. And here with that, we also have wanting to move on. The problem with this Aquarius is that your person of interest may not discuss, just like before, right? Beating around the bush. They may not discuss create, uh, creating discord to weaken others. That is a sentence in that book. Creating discord to weaken others. They may be talking about other things so that someone here is distracted and they do not get to the point, right? But what's the best thing to do? Just avoid it and move on. That is what this person thinks. The problem is, Aquarius, if you really want to be in a certain connection with somebody and long term, you have to clear the air. That's just the way it is. There's no ego, no pride in love. It doesn't work like that. There cannot be ego and pride in love. It is selfless. So if you do see this person showing the desire, actions speak louder than words. Repetitive action. Pattern of behavior. That is what you need to notice. Is there a pattern of behavior here? Whether it's good or bad, you need to decide on that. Is it going to be worth it or not? We have here also the Six of Cups. What's interesting about this card is that it takes you into the past, past memories, beautiful memories of how things were, the first glance, the first touch, everything that happened the first time. Yes, it's very nice. But there's a memory involved here. And the memory also talks about wanting and having that desire of that past life sort of connection as well. Your person of interest here wants to relive those innocent moments right in the beginning when things were simple, a more simple life back then. Now, overall here, I see this person, Aquarius, they're going to take action, but they may be a little bit abrupt and rash. Please understand, yes, they do want to be with you long term, but also understand that anything that has gone unsaid 
you can't have that elephant in the room sort of situation, okay? You need to clear the air. And that can only happen by communication. Communication is key because if you don't communicate, you will not be able to genuinely enjoy each other's company because there will always be that sort of unspoken issue, you see. All right. Just going to do a quick prayer. All right, we have here, these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. We have here, no need to worry, and followed by romance, and then we have no, with an exclamation mark. Very passionate. Okay, if you hear a whisper, don't be alarmed, that is me whispering. Why do I whisper? Someone asked, why do I whisper? So I hear it in my mind's like eye and my ears. I hear it in my head. And then before I forget it, I whisper it to myself quickly. And then I say it out loud. That's why I do that. Wow. Wow. Is this ever an intense... Uh, reading right now. Wow. Uh, we have here no need to worry. So worry attracts negative energies, by the way. <clears throat> so it's best not to have that sort of worry and anxiety. Just understand whatever is going to happen will happen, but it will happen when the timing is right. Here you are dealing with a spiritually based romantic connection. You could have had a past life connection even. There are such things as uh, future life, or there is such a thing as future life. I've done future life readings as well. But past life readings on average are the most common I've seen when I do past life readings. It's usually in the past at some point in time. You could be twin flame soulmates, karmic partners, maybe even more, but these are the top three that I've seen are the most um, intense and strongest. Interesting here, you have no helpful people. You are talking to some people and you can't trust them. You don't know this. Maybe you do. Maybe you, maybe you suspect it. Remember one thing as a person, when you have a hunch or a feeling, listen to your instinct, listen to your intuition, because that is your soul talking to you, the body slash the spirit. Your soul is much more older and wiser than you are. It's been there, done that, had many lifetimes before this one. So it has a little bit of experience, if not thousands of years, okay? It has experience. So listen to your intuition, because here you are talking to some people who are not helpful people. These may be individuals. I'm seeing the room, a room, not room. I'm seeing the rumor, um, on the word, sorry, rumor. Um, I'm seeing the word rumor right now. So this these people or this person, they're causing a sense of rumors, like they're causing rumors. Um, they're taking advantage of your generosity. I'm seeing generosity. So you're being very generous. You're being very kind, open, uh, whatever it takes to be a great friend. However, you need to understand that whoever you're confiding in regarding this specific situation, they are not helping you. So the angels here are telling you to be aware of certain people that you're confiding in. They may not be your actual friend. They may be stabbing you behind the back. Here, within the next few months, things are going to change for you and you will finally be able to take action. Why? You're going to take action because there's going to be something better. Now, this is two different meanings for this card. One is take action because there's going to be something better than the situation that you're stuck in right now. Or two, take action because there's going to be someone better that is going to enter your life in the coming future in the next few months. So it is honestly on the up and up. I'd see this just 
increasing and just flourishing this connection. I do see that. But I also see some of you have been sort of manipulated in a way by others not even knowing this. Somebody here is very persuasive when they talk. So be extremely mindful and careful. Go with what your instinct says. <clears throat> and even if you make a mistake, you don't, you don't know until you try. There's no harm in making mistakes. Okay. Just don't get pregnant if you don't want to. Okay. Um, be very careful with that. Now we have here improving health. This is the overall arching theme, the main theme of this entire thing is how, how has this person truly affected you, your mind, body, your spirit, and your soul? It has been out of whack. It's misaligned. It's just nothing makes sense anymore to you because it's so overwhelming. You have been through a lot. You know, there's a sense of betrayal. There's a sense of upsetness. There's a lack of promise, a lot of infatuation, a lack of communication. So how are you supposed to behave and how are you supposed to act or react to something like that? It's not easy. That is why you have this card, first card the strongest. This is the overall arching theme, very important right now. It is important for you to be that individual who can move forward and align your mind, body, spirit soul. And when you do that, you will start to feel different. Here, it is because of this connection, the anxiety, depression, sadness, melancholy, everything that has happened has happened for a reason, but it was not good. And that is a problem here. So I'd like to have a look just quickly. Let's just have a look quickly at the helpful people card. There may be people that you've known as your family, your friends, co-workers. It's important for you to be very careful and mindful of who you talk to. If you get even a hint of jealousy, discontinue talking to that person about your issues. Okay? It's good to talk to people because you get better perspectives. You understand more. But you got to be careful who you trust. Now here with the improving health card, you're also getting evil eye from people, right? You're getting negative vibes from these people and that affects your health because that affects your aura. Aura has negative energy around it. That's what they send. Sometimes they can even send a cursor, a hex, black magic, voodoo, whatever. They do that. So I do have packages for that, guys. Yay, imagine that. Um, for those of you who are new, I do have packages. Uh, one is called, for this one, specifically improving health. I have the Chakra Checkup Package. I do recommend that you get that because this is a very um, special location to have this card. It means it is actually bothering the majority of you. So I would recommend that you get the Chakra Checkup Package. What I do is I teach you and I tell you in a personalized reading, um, how many negative energies you have in your home, around your aura, and inside of your chakra centers, which are associated to your bodily functions. It's all connected. And I teach you how to rid yourself of negative energies. And when you do that, you have room for positive energy to come in. You have room and that sense of growth, natural growth, to manifest things into your life manifesting here can only happen once you get rid of negative energies because negative energies are blocking that. I also have, for some of you that may not be going through any of this, I have the Holy Light Package, which is a self-help guide. Same thing, it does get rid of negative energies from your home, around your aura, and inside of your chakra centers. It's just that that is more of a self-help guide. This one is a very in-depth reading that I do for you. All right, guys. That is your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance in your situations. Do let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. Wow. I'm getting information on that. So I'm getting prompted to tell you it is important for some of you to get the Holy Light Package. 
Um, if you are suffering from that particular part where your mind, body, spirit, soul, you kind of feel misaligned and you just don't feel right, then definitely you get the Chakra Checkup Package. Read it before you purchase it. You can go to my website, www.asnoitia.com and go to the Rates and Packages section and you'll see it there. For this card, I just got another message in a way. <clears throat> Somebody has given you some gifts or a gift or some type of item, most likely a showpiece, that could have a little bit of negative energy in it, okay? There's no reason, I've seen. There's no reason to actually get rid of it. Um, there is a particular sort of method that I have. I truly have not published that, but maybe I should now that I saw this here. You could always do a prayer on it, okay? Take it to a window, do a prayer on it, and understand that there may be an entity attached to it. There's no harm in this, okay? You go to the window. I, I never do this publicly, by the way. And you say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I give you my blessings, dear entity. I release you now into the atmosphere, into space, never to return again or attack anybody in my bloodline. And you blow three times in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You do that, and it's gone. And it's perfectly fine. You don't have to throw out your souvenirs. I've done that. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I know people, I have so many stories, guys, and hopefully one day I will talk about them and even publish them maybe. But it, it happens. There are little energies, big energies that can get attached to a certain thing. Sometimes people deliberately do it. Sometimes people don't deliberately do it. And it's wherever they bought it from where these things absorb. They want a place to stay. And when they come home with us, they end up finding a place where, oh, look at this person's arguing. They're sad. That is the perfect opportunity. Let me jump from here and onto them or into them. This is why I have those packages, the Chakra Checkup package, as well as the Holy Light package to help you get rid of negative energies from your home. But in a very calm and very nice, very... um not only holy, but a very gentle sort of way. Okay, it's not aggressive. All right. Aquarius, that's your reading. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity and some guidance. Please let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. Take care, stay safe. Bye now.